Welcome back, Ulti family. I'm Andres Moya. Today we'll be showing you how to weld an Ulti new on this 8-inch line by utilizing a hydrogen bakeout with my buddies Chris and Randy from Superheat. Check out weldlife.com and shop all welding gear shown in this video. How's it going, Ulti family? What we're going to do here is a bakeout, also known as a degas. This is an existing line. What we usually do is we come in and we do a bakeout. We're going to wrap all this stuff up onto it. We got our ceramic heaters, insulation, thermocouple wire, our smart packs right here. Pretty much the reason for doing this is these existing lines have a lot of hydrocarbons that go through when they're feeding product through, and that leaves impurities into the metal. So what we're going to do is wrap everything up, and uh, the whole reason behind that is it's going to help remove any hydrocarbons that are left in the metal. So when we get to welding this flange on, it's going to help with uh, reducing cracking and any brittle material that's left in there. Like Randy said, on our bakeouts, these existing lines, whether it be from a refinery that might have petroleum product running through it, or maybe a power plant that's going to have natural gas, high pressure running through it, hydrogen gets embedded in the walls of these pipes. So when we ramp it up to temperature, we get rid of all that hydrogen, uh, so it, it alleviates safety issues, plus makes a better welding surface for these guys to come out and get a good, good contact. Now to bring power to this, we've got our generated rig back here. This is superheat technology. We've got a generator with our machine attached to it. So in, uh, in a lot of different job sites, we've got real small uh, space issues, right? So instead of bringing a generator on one trailer and a, a heat machine on another trailer, we've got all in one. You can see it's a pretty small trailer, so it fits in tight spots like we've got here. So when this thing generates power, our rig here, which has eight ports, we can run eight cables off of this machine each cable is capable of running three heaters. Okay, so what we have here is our smart view, which gives us access to our equipment. This is controlling our SAM, and we go directly to that, and it'll allow us to control our rig over here. I'm gonna hit on. It'll send an electronic signal and communicate to our SAM, which will then power on our GR unit. Okay, now that our GR unit has been turned on remotely, we're ready to unlock the smart pack and get this run started. So like we said, we're going to take it up to about 600 degrees for about four hours. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and strip it out and we'll let Mr. Moya come and weld this flange on. All right guys, on our smart packs, we have inherent safety devices. Now we saw Randy swipe that thing that turns the smart pack on and allows electricity to flow through to our heaters. So currently these are ramping up to heat, but with this white light flashing, we know that we're starting to send heat to this thing. Also, that sends information back to our control room so they can control the heat, whether to ramp it up, keep it in soak, or to start ramping it down. All of that information gets transferred right to the clients real time, be it on their phone or on their laptop. They always have the information, the data on exactly what each weld, the status of it, and how much time is left on it. All right, guys, now that we have our bakeout complete, it's been in soak at 600 for about four hours now. We got most of the impurities out of here. We're going to go ahead and start stripping everything out. That way we can release it to Moya so he can get this flange welded on there. I'm going to go ahead and turn all the power off with our smart card just to make sure that there's no electricity still running through the equipment. We'll move our gear and be ready to go. All right, guys, super heat's done. Bakeout's complete. And today, my friend David Sedisa is going to be helping me out as fitter. All right, guys, so we've got an 8-inch tender wall pipe here. You can see it's already been, you know, baked out. We're going to go ahead and uh, clean this bevel up inside, outside. Clean the bevel up nice and clean. No land. Andy's going to be TIG welding this out. Then we'll go ahead and uh, fit this flange up for him and let him get to welding. Today, we'll be showing you how to weld on this 8 inch line. What we're going to do here is a fake out, also known as a degas. Pretty good right there, Andy. Yeah, give her a tack. Yeah, go ahead and put a tack on top. All right, now that we got the top tack in, well, we got the flange to hold. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, square this. Uh, this eight inch flange. Looks good right there, Andy. I'm gonna use this wedge just to keep it from closing up on us. Right. Go ahead and tack on the bottom. Good. Yeah, go ahead. 
I usually like leaving the wedge in there a little bit. You know, the attack has a tendency to basically close up. You know, it's gonna try to squeeze the bevel in. You can see my wedge is already kind of stuck. So let's let it cool. Remove the wedge. Now I'm just gonna remove these two hole pins out of our way. And now I'm gonna square this on the side. You know, make sure that our flange is nice and square with our pipe. It looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to see, but I see it's a little bit just touching this side first. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Andy tack this side. That'll pull it a little bit that way. All right, Andy, you got it all fit up, all tacked up, ready to go. You good with it? I'm good, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I got it all tacked up. I'm going to go ahead and start feathering my stops and starts. I got my machine set at 90 amps for my roots. I freehand my roots most of the time. It's a, just a preference of mine and the heat. All right, got it all ground up. All my tacks are nice and feathered, so I'm going to go ahead and start from the bottom. Yeah, I'm putting that red on to move slow, side to side, making sure I'm breaking down the bevel, breaking down those walls. Feeding the wire nice and smooth. I'm getting ready to go into my tying here. Just slow down just a little bit. Make sure you feed a little bit of that wire. A lot of times you see like the puddle dancing. Once you see that, go ahead and keep going about the middle of your world and then go and break off. Always try to get as comfortable as you can. You can use the flange, wherever you can, and just try to make your life easier. Nice little baby step side to side. Watching those walls, making sure you're breaking them down. Feeding that wire. Now if your hand gets stuck with the feeding, you can always go back a little bit. Freeze that wire, slide your hand back up, reposition yourself, and then keep going. That way you're not having to stop and ground your, your stop and start all over again. Just keep going. All right, coming in on my second tie end. Going to go ahead and slow down. Heat that tack up. Make sure it fuses in really good. Coming in on my tying again. I'm going to slow down. Here I put my hot pass, turned up my machine on amps to 150. I'm going to start walking this out. passes on the filler I'm gonna turn my machine up to 190 just start walking and feel, feeling walking and feel pushing that wire in there just walking back and forth back and forth pushing the wire walking and pushing walking and pushing just continue to do this repeatedly until I flush it out to where I want it and get get it where I can Put a nice cap on top. It's not too, too below flush. As you can see I walked the cup really fast. All right, we got it all flushed out now. I dropped my machine back down to 160. I'm gonna start capping from the bottom up. Here we go. See how she comes out. Alright, I'm gonna start 
jabbing from the bottom up. Go. Guys, come down. Well, there you have it, guys. I just showed you guys how to do an Ulta New Field Weld flange, 8 inch from start to finish. Somewhat tough. Try to leave it as thick as I could. But uh, big thank you to Superheat, Chris, and Randy back there for helping me out. And uh, David Sidisa for helping me with this nice bevel and fit up. But if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys. See you on the next one.